so many chips. Welcome back. In the last episode, we machined the elbow of our six axis robot. In the meantime, we have settled for a forearm and wrist design. At first, I wanted to combine carbon fiber and 3D printing up here. However, I was not quite sure about the accuracy. And that's why we also settled for a machine design from aluminum. Since we only have a three axis machine, this will be made by plates. Here you can see the design 3D printed. For joint five, it uses a belt drive to stay narrow and get weight back to the elbow. The motor mount uses slots to adjust the belt tension. To test a concept, I usually print it out. In this case, the arm was too big for the print bed, so we had to join it from two pieces. Obviously, it's optimated for aluminum, so there was immense flexing in the 3D printed structure. It's so fascinating to see this arm finally come together. This also motivated me to clean up the wiring mess. In the future, we will need an enclosure for this. As soon as the structure is completely from aluminum, we will focus on cable management on the robot. The forearm consists of two pieces and now we will machine the first one. It's a cylindrical shaped plate that connects the forearm with the elbow. All right, guys, we totally need to end this. This is just crap. Since I make my own parts, I like to design work holding features into the part itself. And that's what you can see here. I call this the double contour method. The big advantage is I don't need to leave stock under the part itself that I then have to mill away in a second op. So the part can have the same thickness as the stock itself. Now it's time for the second part, which is the bigger one. And also here I wanted to move away from work holding with tape or a vacuum to use more aggressive cuts. So here I also machined work holding features into the first operation to then securely locate the part for the second operation. If you're interested, I could show you my fusion workflow here because it saves a lot of time and material. Just hit me up here. Bushings locate the part in the second op.
Okay guys, I had to stop because there are so many chips in here. This was by far the most fun part ever. Just have a look at these chips. Also the surface finish again, so flat here. I mean, you can see my finger. Hope everything fits. Because Joint 5 has so limited space, it uses a bike bearing. They can withstand radial and axial forces. That's why I don't need another needle bearing in there and have more space. I have now drilled and tapped these M8 threads. This was quite annoying. Now you may ask yourself, why is this guy spending the best years of his life in this old garage? Yeah, you're right. I shouldn't. Supported by adrenaline, I then started the most satisfying part, assembling the CNC machine parts. The CNC machine pockets now come in very handy, because they help to perfectly align these two parts. I'm so happy with the surface finish and the fit of the bearing. It's absolutely perfect and I can't wait to install it on the robot arm. Yes! <laughs> the whole table is shaking. As always, if you like this video series and want to see more CNC and DIY robotics, please follow along and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.